again for this opportunity, once again, that we come, Lord God, to be fed. We're hungry, Lord God, and we need the nourishment that only you can give us. So, Lord, let our, all our hearts and minds be turned to you as you uh, serve the message for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. We're back and we are continuing. We're, in, we're still in our series, you all. God's got all power. Where's yours? This will be part nine. And we've been studying this concept concerning power for weeks now, right? We've been on this for a while. I call that a clue. Whenever we're on something for a long time, I call it a clue. Somebody needs to hear it. Somebody may need to hear it a few times, or some people uh, may need to stop ducking it and just come on in and hear it. You know, that's uh, that might be what it is. I don't know. Only God knows. But I know he still has us here. He's not moved us on to a different topic uh, or sermon series yet. He's got some in store, but uh, not yet, he said. So, uh, and, and, and that's because of our need for one thing. I know this, it's, it's because of the need for us to be able to glean the importance of power, especially as it applies to our lives as human beings. The Lord God also wants us to come to fully understand that although mankind has been indwelled to a degree with some power, as we've been talking about, we've got about 50 cents in our pocket, 50 cents worth of power, God's got it all, all right? God's got all power in himself. God holds the keys. In fact, we're going to look at a couple of scriptures right off the top concerning the power, uh, uh, this power and how it's, it, and its association to God. So I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Annalisa to please take us first to the Old Testament. And read First Chronicles 29, verses 11 and 12 for us, please. Tell us what that says. First Chronicles 29, 11 and 12 says yes. this. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, and the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and, and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you reign over all. And your hand is power and might, and your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. All right, all right. Thank you, Annalisa. All right. Uh, um, these are powerful scriptures. If you read them and you look at them, uh, this is a, a testament to the power of God. And look, I'm just going to skip down to 12. He says here, both riches and honor come from you and you reign over all. You hear me? Yes. Over all. He says, in your hand is power and might. That's right. All right? In your hand is to make great and in your hand is to give strength to all. It all comes from you. That's what this is saying. You all getting that? Mm -hmm. This is what this is saying. Uh, verse 11 mentions things like greatness, glory, victory, majesty. It goes on to say that all that is in heaven and earth is God. It is all right. Yes. Now, that makes it apparent, you guys. It makes it apparent that God possesses all immense greatness yes. and eminence and even preeminence. Okay? It tells us that. Uh, this is what uh, needs to be understood about power when it comes to that concept. The concept of power being associated with God. We don't ever want to take that lightly. Verse 12 tells us uh, also that riches and honor come from God. Riches and honor come from God. Mm -hmm. And why? Well, it says in the next sentence that God reigns over all. Amen. All right? And that text goes on to say that in God's hand is what I said it before. Power and might. God holds power and might in his hand. Think about the things we do as men and women trying to attain power, trying to study, trying to do this, trying to plan. God's got it right in his hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do any of that, huh? Power to change people's mind. We try the power of positive thinking, the power of suggestion, the power of meditating. God said, excuse me, I got it right here. It's right in his hands, okay? Right here Amen. in his hands is Amen. what he's saying. Amen? No doubt about it. 
God has all power, no question about it. Case closed. Am I right? Amen. There is no other supposed God that has the power. No other man-made God has the power. No other uh, uh, person claiming to be God or new gods have the power, nor accept it as God. Anybody accept it as God? No, nope, they don't have that power. Only God has it. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us there'll be people coming around in the last day saying, I am the Christ. You may have heard of some of these folks already, okay? Mm -hmm. but don't you believe it? There's don't only believe. one, and there's only one God that has that kind of power. That's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Thank you. All right? Amen. Now, in First Chronicles 29, 11, and 12, as we're just... Uh, uh, Pastor just read, these, these glowing truths come from King David. Huh? David was saying this because of his praise to God for being who God is, Elohim, the Lord our creator. Obviously, David was a man after God's own heart. That's what God said himself, right? Because David was a man who had a deep desire to follow God. You said, well, David did some things wrong. Yeah, but his intent was to follow God. Amen. David had a, was, a, was, a, was a man who had a heart, had God's own heart. He wanted to follow God. He wanted to do the will of God. Okay. Even when David was fighting Goliath, he said, you're not coming against me. David knew who was with him. Amen. 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 So yeah, uh, uh, he came to do the will of God. And that means to do whatever was necessary and required of him. Amen. That's what it means to do the will of God. Amen. Sometimes we do a thing or two and we think we're something. We think we're doing something. God gave you an assignment. Boy, you just think you to catch me out. <laughs> Don't mean a thing. You're, you're here to do the will of God. Amen. You're not here for your own vain glory. None of us are here for our own vain glory. We're here to do the will of God. And what Amen. if something should happen while you're doing the will of God and you, you should, I don't know, get hurt or harmed? He said, glorify the, the Lord in all those things, Amen. right? Whatever's going on in your life, we're supposed to glorify the Lord in the matter. In Amen. All in all things, because we're here to serve him. Amen. It's easy to talk about Romans 12, 1 and 2, where it says, I beseech you, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Okay? But when he starts using you over and over again, will you continue to do it? Mm. Will you continue to walk in his ways when you don't feel like it? When you're hurting, when you're stumbling, when you're bumbling. Will you continue to give God the glory then when you don't have anything? Speak Holy Spirit. You don't even have a deodorant to wipe up under your arm. Will you still say thank you, Lord, if you're living in a field somewhere? Will you give God the glory Indeed. when you don't if you didn't have a shelter over your head? Yes. Those are things that we're thinking about. Will you still want to honor God? When David was, was, was uh, being chased through the woods and, and by uh, uh, King Saul and others, and he had to hide out, and he had the chance to do uh, the unthinkable. He had a chance to retaliate. He didn't. You know why? Because he was serving God as his servant. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. That's what it means to have a heart for God. When you want to get back at somebody, they just mess with your last nerve. And don't ask me what a last nerve is. I don't know what a last nerve is. I think people got nerve to think they got a last nerve. But whatever it is, uh, uh, you and you can't retaliate because of God. Mm -hmm. We serve Him then. Would you get back with the get back? Get the get back back. In other words, would you do that when you're serving God? And notice what David wrote in the last sentence of verse 12, which Pastor Annalisa read. He said, in your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. And we've been hearing this for the past eight weeks. In God's hand is ultimate and sovereign power to do whatever he pleases. Isn't that right? Yes. He's got power in his hand to help you. He's got power in his hand to hold you. he got power in his hand to strengthen you. He's got power in his hand to change you. He's got power in his hand to uplift you. Amen? Amen. I'll tell you what, if you're born one way, he's got power in his hand to rebirth you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. 
Amen. to get you reborn, born again. The power is in God. Amen. Amen. Hold that thought for a minute. Let, uh, uh, that we just looked at in First Chronicles. I want to go somewhere else. Let's go here. We'll come, hopefully come back to First Chronicles. I don't forget. But let's go to. Let's jump to Isaiah forty twenty nine. Isaiah 40, 29. Pastor, can you tell us what this says? Isaiah 40, 29 says this. He gives power ah. to the weak. Mm -hmm. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Amen, amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Uh, okay, for that reminder. See, this is another example. This is another confirmation of what we just spoke of in 1 Chronicles 29, 12. About God's hand making great and giving what to all? Giving strength, strength. to all. Amen. Mm -hmm. Such is the power, the sovereignty, and the abilities of God. It says it right there. Not only uh, uh, does it say it in First Chronicle, but the prophet says it in Isaiah 40, 29. He gives power to the weak. Mm -hmm. And to those who have no might, he, guess what? He's going to increase strength. your strength. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank Amen. You, Lord. Amen. That means, that's when you when you get me, means and men mix up, it, it mean. But, but that means God becomes your box of Thank weeds. You, Lord. God gives you the strength. God gives you the power. He's the internal oatmeal that you need. God gives you the strength. He's your protein. Thank He's you, your Lord. carbs. He's your, your strength to go faster, to go longer, to endure temptation. God gives you the power. That's what it said. Even, uh, it said, even the youth shall faint and be weary, the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen. Yes, Your strength you, is renewed in God. Thank you, Lord. It's renewed in the power of God. He does that. It's all in his hand. Thank you, all right? Lord. All right, that's what David was talking about. Giving strength to all. That's the power and the ability of God. Therefore, his power, watch this, God's power is not one way. It's multi-directional. Have you ever been to uh, a 4th of July, I'm sure you have, or New Year's where they pop the fireworks and the little thing goes up and then it goes and you see all the streams going out in diff all the colors going out in different places. That's the direction of God's power. It goes out. It's multi-directional. God's power, blam, isn't it right, Sister Audrey? Bam, the power of God can go anywhere at any time that he pleases. Now, we got to understand who we're working with, you all. It can go anywhere. His power is multi-directional. In other words, he dispenses his power and can cause it to go out as he pleases. Thank you, Lord. That's what you got to know about the God we serve. It can go out to several areas and, to un and in untold amounts hmm? to people as he pleases. Oh, yes, it can. Oh, Thank yes, he will. Power, oh, Thank yes, he will. Amen. Amen. So then God uh, not only got the power, but he also has the compassion. We say God's got all power. God's got all compassion too. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Lord. God's got all the power. He's got all the compassion and the love to give power to the weak. Thank Amen. You, uh, power you, to the weak. Huh? You, that through Lord. Jesus Christ, Pastor said he showed, showed us that. that. Amen. Mm -hmm. He said when we were yet weakened in our sin. Okay. Thanks God. To God. God did it. Okay. He came. He sent His Son. So He gives mm -hmm. power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Thank you, Lord. No might. Mm -hmm. God does what? He increases, he increases strength. strength. The word tells us, as the word tells us in Isaiah 40, 29. Praise God. Thank you, God doesn't leave us out, does he, church? Mm -mm. God won't leave you. God will never forsake you. He'll never Thank abandon you. Never, never, never. All these are scriptures in the Bible, and it's true. That's why I say... Read that Bible. Go to it. Find what you're looking for. Read it again. Go somewhere else. Don't worry. You won't get lost. The road will lead you to the truth. Amen. Okay? If you study that Bible, God doesn't want to leave anybody out. The, the, the Bible tells us that God wants not one to perish. Amen? And that's what we always say. Not one to perish. That old brother-in-law of yours, all that mother-in-law of yours. Uh-uh-uh, he won't, don't worry about it, just hold tight, hold still, huh? hold still. So 
Sometimes you gotta have a donut just to have a whole still. <laughs> <laughs> that's a little side, that's a little side hint. Just hold on, God's got it, but God already knows you love, we love our relatives, but sometimes, sometimes you all, in all seriousness, but we have to know that God has the power to change people. Amen, amen. He has the power to do it. No, not, not, uh, uh, in no uncertain terms, you're looking at somebody that was changed, I'm still undergoing change. Sometimes I don't recognize myself. I stopped trying to I started trying to look like I used to look. I just said, okay, Lord, whatever. Because he's going to change you. He's going to change you. And you've got to go through some changes. Amen. You're not going to be able to do it, it, what you used to do. You're not going to be able to uh, uh, have the same thought patterns, the same likes and dislikes as you right. used to. Just, just You've got to open yourself up and allow the Lord to change you. Okay? Amen. He will, if you're repentant, just like I said in the beginning, in yeah, Isaiah 55, 6 and 7. Mm -hmm. If you repent, all right, forsake your ways. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man. Even your thoughts, it said, let them things go, okay? Mm -hmm. about, well, that's just how I am, or you better get to be another way. Amen. Well, God knows how I am. No, God knows how you were, <laughs> okay? <laughs> He's going to change you. You can't stay the way you are. Mm -mm. No matter what you like, you want to make sure that it's in God's keeping. Amen. I'm just telling y'all, okay? God's not going to leave us out. He wants not one to perish. As a matter of fact, Pastor, take us to 2 Peter, please. Tell us what it says in 2 Peter chapter 3. I think that's verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter, uh, verse, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. What does that say? 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning mm -hmm. his promise, as some count slackness, mm -hmm. but is long suffering toward us, mm -hmm. not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the re come to repentance. Amen. Do y'all hear that? Uh, and I want to say, y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at three cameras, so I'm looking at the camera now that's speaking to everybody out in, in uh, media land. I hope you all hear that. Because there are some people that may not understand. Uh, I hadn't planned on using this text, but last night as I was preparing, it just kept interjecting itself uh, into my thoughts. So I know the Lord was putting this uh, in that I had to speak on it a little bit. And uh, <clears throat> uh, right after I was leaving Isaiah 40, 29, this came, cut, came up in front of me and I spoke about God's love and how he's refusing to leave us out. So in this passage here, Peter is insisting that God keeps his promise and isn't slow or late in fulfilling his promises. Mm -hmm. Y'all getting that? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we say, where is God? Right where he's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Well, how come he hasn't done this? Because it's not in you. It, you're going to rush God? You're going to tell God when to do something and how to do something? Mm -hmm. He's not slacking his promises. Mm -hmm. And that's because God is never late. Did you know that? <laughs> Can God be late? So, well, Lord, you know, you, I, if you were there earlier, I, this wouldn't have happened. God wasn't worried about it, was he? Jesus wasn't worried about it when, the, when, his, when his friend said that. God's not late. It's because God is not only the supreme maker of all schedules, but he is also the originator and keeper of time. Did you hear me? He's the keeper of time itself. All right? That's why you have, that's what you have now. Are you getting this? Now, in the passage in 2 Peter, Christians need to, needed to consider that any delays considering Jesus' second coming as a sign of God being patient, they, uh, uh, but not late. If there was a delay in coming, it's because God was being patient and not late. You got to understand that God already knows, all right? As I said, he wants not one to perish. So what does God do? I can't tell you what he does because there are some things that I don't know about God. The secret things belong to God himself, amen? But we know enough to know that God is in complete control, amen? And what God, uh, So he might just extend time in appropriate areas of his choosing in divine order, according to his dispensations, who knows? God knows. Amen. We certainly can't say, all right? We can't figure it all out. 
But let me tell you who's got it all worked out. That's Lord. God, the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. He's got it worked out, ironed out, and put out long before it was ever put in. He had it put out. Thank Amen. You, he had things under control. And that's what we have to understand about God. Because as I said, as scripture teaches us, God is the creator of time. Mm -hmm. So God doesn't fret about time. He doesn't suffer uh, uh, from lack of time, etc. He doesn't say, oh, let me hurry up. Oh, I better hurry. No, God doesn't work that way. God is the keeper of time. He knows the end from the beginning. So God doesn't operate like we as human beings do. God is spirit. He yeah. hovered over the face of the earth, okay, before there was anything here. When it was formless and void, it said the Holy Spirit was moving even then. He already knew. He already had plans. He was already creating. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So people don't understand that. So, uh, 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 and so all, all of this points to what I initially was saying, that God's got all power and is not willing to leave anyone abandoned. He's Amen. not willing to leave anyone out, but will move heaven and earth in order to save people, in order to call people to repentance. Don't you know he'll part a Red Sea in a minute? Don't you know he'll make that water across the Jordan stand in a heap and say, stop and don't move? He'll cause the thunder to say, where are we? Shall we go? He'll call the oceans to say, stop and don't come any further. Your proud waves won't move any further. This is the God we serve. Amen. This is not a this is this is not by happenstance. This is by God's stance. Thank you, Lord. That's what Thank we have Lord. to understand. That's Lord. why uh, uh, we should be following him. In all things. That's why we have. But see, you can't follow him when you don't get to when you don't know him. Come on. You feel so in inadequate, and you are, because you don't know him, okay? You have to know him to understand some things that are going on. It's hard to talk to people sometimes when they don't know the Lord, and you want to tell them something that will help them, but they won't receive it because they just don't want to hear it because they, they just don't know him, okay? Mm -hmm. But uh, still, we see mankind, that's why we see mankind right now languishing in sin. Yeah. Still determined to seek not the power of God, but that of the prince of the power of the air and the atmosphere. Because that's really who people are used to following. They're more used there, they're used to following Satan than following the Lord. The yeah. prince of the power of the air. Because that's all we know in the natural, in our natural flesh. Amen. That's all we know are the things that are out here right now. And you know who's running that? Satan is. Well, the devil continues guys. to manipulate men and women. Well, boys and girls, too. I, I guess I could say all people. Let me add that. It's not just men and women. It's boys and kids nowadays. You know, right the other day, you heard of that 17-year-old. What did he do? He uh, 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 sh shot that, uh, tried to take the life of the 49ers uh, football team wide receiver. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was a kid himself. Mm -hmm. They had a picture of him running down the street acting like he didn't know what to do after that devil had gotten him to shoot that man for his, for his watch, okay? Mm -hmm. A watch of all things. And down in Georgia, we heard the news just days ago about that 14-year-old, right? Just got to school, must be a freshman, and you kill four people. You gun down two of your classmates and two staff members. Help us, Lord. And now he and his father, they got uh, mug shots side by side because they took him to jail as well, for giving him an AR-15 automatic assault weapon, which the father says, uh, I bought it for hunting. Oh, uh, okay. All right, well, that, they, they locked him up for that, I guess. So, uh, hmm. You know, the devil will make a liar out of you because he's a liar. The devil is a supreme liar. I always say he's the jumbo liar. Okay, that's what he is, and that's what we're seeing. We're, we're taken by the prince of the power of the air, and that's not God telling these people to commit these heinous and murderous crimes. God didn't do that. No, it's the devil and his henchmen who are roaming the atmosphere, and for a time, they have the power to cause destruction in the lives of people. That's why people need to get to know the Lord. Amen. People are estranged from one another. They don't talk to their friends. They don't talk to their families. Different things like that. The devil loves to keep up separation and division and all these different Discord. things are going on. Discord. Uh, uh, that's right. 
in the lives of human beings. But listen to what the Word says about these things which we see taking place right before our very eyes. Those of you who, uh, who know the, uh, your Bibles and you know the Word somewhat, you'll recognize what 2 Timothy 3.1 says, right? It, says, it starts off, but know this, perilous times will come. That's all I need to say about that. Am I right? Mm -hmm. The perilous times are here. Isn't that true? Mm -hmm. Would you say perilous times are here? Yes. I would say they're here. And I don't know how much more perilous they have to become, but they're here right now. But let me ask Pastor Annalisa to tell us what type of behavior the world tells us that people will be taking part in and doing uh, uh, in, in these uh rather those days. Pastor, tell we don't have to read the whole thing, but but just take up to 2 Timothy 3, and you read verses 3 and 4 and see what that says. 2 Timothy 3 and 4 says the world will be doing this, being, be, will be like this, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, uh, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Thank you, Pastor. All right. This is the type of, of behavior that's indicative uh, of people who are victims of Satan and his armies of fallen angels. Do you recognize that? These people are puppets of the devil. Puppets. That's what it's saying. This is what you'll see. This is how you can tell. This is how you can gauge things. People don't love like they used to. They don't love like they should. Even uh, um, even natural love uh, was more natural back in the day than it is today. Let's put it like that. At least you could uh, uh, have some recourse. You could run to a stranger's house and get help. You could you could ask your neighbor for something, and people knew each other. And I know I'm from Chicago, and and uh, from the projects of Chicago, 10,000 people in one building, and we have like 17 stories, uh, 10 or 12 buildings in a row. Can you imagine how many people? Uh, I, I, in my neighborhood, it was much different than Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, okay? But even my neighborhood, even though it was back in the day, people still respected one another more than they do now, mm -hmm. okay? But nowadays we see that People are unloving, unforgiving. They lie on you, slanderous, without self-control. Brutal, despisers of good. Aren't we seeing that now? Yes. Of course we're seeing that now. Traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Oh, we could get into that for a long time, but I can't touch it right now, not like I want to. But this type of this is the type of behavior that that Satan has whipped on people. Okay. Tell us again, Pastor, what Jesus says about this devil in uh, uh, um, in the book of John, chapter eight, verse forty-four. Eight forty-four. Jesus says, "You are of your father, the devil, mm. and the desires of your father you want to do." You want to do it, he said. He he was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. Oh, they crammed all that into one verse. That could have been three verses, but that's how much, uh, uh, that's how important that is. The, the word that Jesus is putting out right there. Um, uh, we can't stress this enough, that siding with Satan and his, his uh, uh, ploys is the same as having a mentor. That's what Jesus is talking about here. That's why he says, uh, uh, you are of your father, the devil, and desires of your father you want to do. You want to do Satan's will. Mm -hmm. You want to do what Satan desires. Those are the things that you desire. That's what he's saying, like father, like son. Mm -hmm. Huh? Like parent, like daughter, okay? That's, that, that's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. I saw a young lady. She is in Hollywood. She says some of the raunchiest things. I forgot her name. But she was a, I don't know. Oh, I can't think of her name. But I, I, because I don't keep up anymore. But, but I know she was a rapper or something. 
but she's got really explicit lyrics. And she said, oh, I, she said, trust me, I, I know what I'm in for. She said, I, I, I made a deal with the devil. Now, I don't know how, what she means by that. But she said, I made a deal with the devil. I already know. But see, I need that money. I want that money. She, she said, what well, he wants, I want. And so her lyrics are terrible. Her, her vernacular, her mannerism, her, her look. Everything that just makes you want to cover your eyes and shame. But she embraces it. And she told it matter-of-factly. They interviewed her and she said, I know. I know. Uh, 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 but this is for me. This is what I want. And I'm going for it. Something very, very up, uh, upfront uh, honesty in that. So this right here, what Jesus is talking about, that's what happened. You are your father. Love is a pleasure. Love is a pleasure rather than lovers of God. God nowhere in that. Don't want to hear about God. Want to make that money and take as many people down with her. Young girls trying to be like her. This type of stuff. Your daughter, your granddaughter. Dressing provocatively. Doing the things that she does. Uh, whatever else they do. Bumping and grinding. Uh, whatever it is they te they're teaching these young people now and think it's cute. All of this different stuff, man, you really, really got to got to introduce people to the Lord. So we can't stress it uh, uh, much, uh, uh, any strong, uh, we, we, we can't be lax in, in speaking that word because the devil is going to lie to people. He's trying to not just get the older people like us, but the younger people coming in. That's who he's after. Mm -hmm. This whole young generation, that's who he's that's after. Generation. He's after them. He wants them looking at a cell phone and not caring about anything else and just texting and no relational uh, uh, situations. He wants them just lost. Lost. And that's what's going on. And the, the, the Jesus says that, and you know what? He was a liar. He was a murderer from the beginning. And when he speaks... He speaks a lie because he's the father of it. We can't mm -hmm. stress it enough. It's Siding with Satan is, is just it's like having a mentor and doing what your mentor tells you to do. Studies have shown that abused children in many cases become abusers themselves. Am I right? In many cases, that's what it says. Well, no one in their right mind would want to follow or be mentored by the devil who is Satan. If there's anybody that wants to be mentored by him or follow him in something wrong, like that young lady I was talking about, you can tell that she's, she's possessed. She's already got demons shouting at her or demons in her, one or the other. But ironically, that's what goes on, not only in the physical, that's what goes on. Uh, uh, we follow certain things. Amen. And not only in the physical and natural forms of abuse does that go on, but in the supernatural realm as well. Uh huh. Amen. You get abused in the supernatural, then you follow that abuser. Satan is a supernatural enemy that you can't see. Demons are a supernatural entity that you can't see. Hmm? They are principalities and powers, the rulers of the darkness of this age, the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places, as it talks about. In Ephesians 6. It tells you that these, the, these things are there. And you need to know that the devil and his demons, his, his armies, they're not bluffing you all. They're not playing with you. They're serious. They're serious. And you shouldn't play with them. They play for keeps because their time is short. Amen. Their time is short and they know it. Therefore, they're working around the clock seeing what type of lure they can use to get you to bite on. If you'll go for it, if you'll go for that lure, that's what they want you to do. Uh -huh. See, if you'll bite on it, and then you'll be taken for a ride. Some people don't come back from that ride, you all. Some people don't come back from that ride. When you see a person out there on the street, and they're walking in traffic, and they're dragging a towel and unclothed, they haven't bathed in maybe three months, and they don't care, they've been out there for a while, Okay? Their, their mind is gone and altered. Religions. They've been out there for a while. Okay? Some people don't come back from their ride with the devil. So what are the lures? 
of the devil and his forces? What are some of the things that he might use in order to lure people into captivity by using his power? Well, Satan will use practically anything from lying to making suggestions to you mentally, tempting you in, in areas where you're weak. He knows your weak points. Did you know that? This is football season. You're going to see some teams and they're going to attack the, the other team's weak points. They've been okay? Studying. They've been studying each other. They watch film on each other. They know if you got a spring. Do you know that football teams, uh, uh, before the game, they know your injury potential. They know how many surgeries you've had. They know that you got a carbuncle on your, on your left foot. And if you're playing the outside, they're going to run that play. They're going to have 20 plays scripted to run to the left. As time goes on in the fourth quarter, uh, they know. They know who tires out. They know that you held out and you didn't come to camp because you were negotiating your contract. So you said, I'm not coming to camp until they raise my pay. So and at the last two weeks of camp, now your pay has been raised. Now you're in uniform and you're on the field. But guess what? You're not in shape. So you get gassed about the third, uh, fourth quarter, and that's when they throw the bomb. <laughs> Knowing that you can't catch. <laughs> Knowing that you... You can't catch or you can't even catch up with the man that they're throwing the ball to. They're throwing to me because he's tired. You're not, he's not in shape. That's why. That's the same thing the devil does. Mm -hmm. He knows how to run the right play at you. He knows you're not in shape. He knows you haven't been studying. He knows you don't know the word. He know you've been out there partying at the club and got your Bible somewhere dusty in the car. He already knows. He already knows. So he attacks you at your weakest point. That's what he does. You said, Amen. what are the things that the devil uses in order to, to, to bring us into captivity? Well, I tell you, he can use any of those things. For some people, he'll get them to commit to immorality and perversion and different things. I had a friend, and uh, uh, he told me point blank, because there's a lot of rumors going around he said, well, they're right. He said, I do like dirty, dirty. I like them, 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 them dirty women. He said, I like them. Joel, I like them with one foot in the gutter. See, that's what the devil ran at him. He ran, uh, I don't know why, but, that he, but, 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 but he knew his weakness. And he was always in trouble. He was always in trouble. You know, I know some men that used to they used to do those things. So again, even more heinous things, like he knows who's prone to, to mass shootings. We've seen that the more and more today. And murder. Mm -hmm. He knows if somebody pick on you long enough, you don't have the, the, the gumption or the courage to stand up to that person. You just go kill innocent people. That, 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 that's the devil. That's the devil knowing that you don't care. Okay? He knows what you'll do. All right? And he uh, all kinds of things. Oh, and those people that... Now put guns out. He knows that you're going to keep on saying, well, it's not the gun, it's the person. It's not the gun, it's the person. It's not that 30, that 33 round clip that'll, that you can hit 30 people with, with one second. And that's true, but the devil knows the propensity of people. Yes. And the murderous yes. intent that they have. So whether you're murdering people with a gun or whether you're murdering people through abortion, the devil will use you. He'll use you. He'll use you. He knows how to get you. He knows how to get to you. One can't argue against the other, can they? All have to turn to the Lord. That's why you don't listen to that devil. But he knows how to, to woo you. He knows how to woo you and to lure you. Okay? Oh, yeah. He's powerful. He's very slick. He's an all-purpose destroyer. And you really have to be on your game to deal with that devil. Yes. You really have to be in the Word of God and let God lead you in all you're doing. And you can't do it in your own power. It comes from the power of God. Amen. Being lined up with God in all things. In all things. Friends, if Satan can get you to believe his lies, he can get you to lie. Hmm. Did you hear me? If Satan can get you to believe in his lies, he'll get you to lie. All right? Because that's all you know. Okay, you believe in his lies, I mean, you're going to be a liar real soon. All right? Amen. Because as Jesus said, you begin to want to do the desires of your father, who's the devil. 
You see, that's mentorship. That's mentorship. Oh. But Satan is the wrong mentor to have. Amen. He's definitely a liar and the father of it. So don't fall for his power Amen. to get you to go for lies and untruths. We're seeing that all over the place. We're seeing that in the church. We're seeing leaders being lulled to sleep, oh, Lord, going for lies. Talking about naming and claiming. I heard somebody else say, blab it and grab it. Okay? <laughs> That's what they, they believe in this stuff. <laughs> they believe in this stuff. You better walk with the Lord. Uh, uh, you better walk with the Lord. You better believe in what the Lord tells you to do. And how about idol worship? Can he get you that way? You say, I don't believe in idols. I don't believe in statues and different things like that. Uh, well, do you know that you don't have to idolize statues? No. Uh -huh. That's old hat. Okay. Say no, people are getting wise to that, some people anyway. But you don't, you don't necessarily have to idolize anyone in particular. But don't forget, it's possible that many people make idols out of themselves. Hmm. Did you know that? Am I right? Amen. Just look around you. Look around. Not in the Zoom room. Don't y'all look at each other. <laughs> I'm just saying, let's look around. <laughs> look around after you leave the Zoom room, okay? After you go outside. Just look around you in, uh, not this uh, after service. Not at this church. But just look around you as you go out amongst the public and you access TV and you watch movies or the media or your television set. Have you noticed the amount of people Nowadays, that take selfies. Have you noticed that? It's been going on for a while, but you know it's not slowing down, is it? It's not slowing down, especially our young people. You Have you seen them? <laughs> Sometimes you try to walk by somebody and get by at the store, you say, excuse me. They yeah, look at you like... Thank you, brother. And they're looking at themselves. They're just looking so hard. They're just looking and looking and looking. We live in a time of selfies. Photographing themselves. And then what do they do? They post it on Facebook. Do they not? It's just me. Now, if I'm wrong, y'all let me know after service. Don't interrupt me, but, <laughs> but, but tell me after service. Do you not see them on Facebook? I see it, and I look to see what that person's saying. They're not saying anything. They're just looking at themselves. <laughs> They're just looking at it. They're just looking at themselves. They, they're posting on Facebook and sometimes they don't even say it. They don't get it. Is that something I'm missing? What's that about? As if to say, look at me. Give me some attention. Give me some likes. Honor me. Idolize me. Police. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right or wrong? In many oh, cases, Lord, in many cases, isn't we that what we us. see? I, I know I'm not the only one that see this. Y'all look at, oh, I see why y'all looking at me God like that. I bet not see y'all like that. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder everybody just looking at me like, mm, oh, the, the, the canary. But you do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, I'm just saying, there are different types of idolatry, and we have to be wise to it, you all. If you have a youngster doing that, just, just bring him in a little bit. Just bring him in and say, why are you... Don't you know you're loved, right? You know you're loved. You know you don't have to put yourself out like that. You know you don't have to do that. Uh, and if they don't have a father, tell them about the Heavenly Father. That you do have a father that values you. That loves you. Okay, you don't have to idolize yourself. Idolize God and everything else will be worked out. Amen. That's what we need to be telling people. Because another, here's another example of self-idolatry. Huh? When, you, when you're caught up in Satan's power. How about people in many cases that worship themselves, even seeking to change themselves? Have you seen that one? Huh? Change their sex. Change their gender. Seeking to change God's design for their own design. 
That's what it is, right? That's exactly what it is. We're, we're not, see, the devil wants you not to acknowledge that God's design is perfect, but your own design is what you seek. Now, who told you that? Hmm? Jesus says that your, your desires are of your father. You desire to do what he wants to do. You want to do what he desires. That's who told. That's who's telling our children this. That's who's telling our, our grandchildren this. That you can change yourself to the point that it's not God. It's for your own pleasure more than God's design. Amen. Okay. As we go back to Second Second uh, Timothy three, uh, instead of what God wants, it's what we want. In other words, mm -hmm. uh, love of the pleasure rather than lovers of God. Loving what we want instead of God's perfect design. Seeking to change God's design for what we deem is appropriate, not what God says uh, is important and, and holy and good, but what we want. All right? So these are things that the devil will, will use against us. Amen. And that's what happens uh, when we don't know the power of God. And we don't line up completely uh, uh, on God's side. We're, we're, we're going to be pulled this way and that. And there are many more, but I won't be able to go into all that today. So, uh, so in closing, how do we come, how do we come to, well, let me just say, how do we overcome these issues? I'll tell you how. Pastor, take us to uh, Romans chapter 8, verses 35 to 37. Romans, Romans 8. 35 to 37. Please. Romans 8, 35 to 37 this? says this. this is it. it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Mm -hmm. Shall tribulation mm -hmm. or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or peril sword? Or sword. Mm -hmm. Is it as it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. Mm -hmm. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Pastor. All right, listen, friend. No one can separate us from Christ's love. Y'all agree with that? Amen. No one can separate us from it. The Bible says no one can snatch us out of his hands. Right, Sister Danielle? I don't care what the devil tries to do. We're one with God. Nobody can snatch us out. Now, I didn't say you couldn't jump out. Some of y'all like jumping beans. Jump right out of God's hand, jumping in, jumping out. But God said nobody can snatch you from him, okay? No one can separate us from Christ's love because the love of God is part of the power of God. Do you understand that? It's a supernatural power and it's a supernatural agape love. Amen? Amen? That's for sure. No one can snatch us out of his hands that way. So in closing... What must you do, friends? Well, this is what you should do. Put yourself completely in God's hands. Know that you're in the hands of God, okay? Determined, faithfully believing in God, believing in Jesus, believing that he's going to rescue you and take you off the devil's fish hook. If you're on the hook, if you're on the line, you're on the fish hook of the devil, get yourself in the hands of God. He'll take you off that fish hook, and he'll take good care of you. Amen? Amen. And, and God is more powerful than anyone. God is more powerful than all. That's what the Word says. So get in God's hands, stay there in his strength, and don't ever forget that God's got all power. So where's yours? It ought to be with God. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's all we got for today. That's enough to keep us. That's enough to strengthen us. That's enough till the next hurdle, the next go around. Now, to those of you who don't know the Lord, where's your power? Where's your inner reserve? What things are you battling in your life right now keeping you from peace, keeping you from being uh, 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 more self-assured in yourself? Are you happy with yourself? Really? Really? I think back to when I didn't know the Lord and I had some serious issues. 
You couldn't tell it by looking at me. You couldn't tell it by my job. You couldn't tell it by the way I behaved. But I had some issues that I, that I wasn't happy with and I could not change the way I was until I met Jesus. Until I met someone who had the power to change me. I need to go through a birth process, you all. See, because I was born into sin. And the people I around was around, uh, it wasn't going to help me. I was only getting worse. I was going to have to take some people down, take some people out. But it's before I could even begin to take people out, the Lord took me in. <laughs> the Lord took me in. Thank you. That's right, Sister Helen. He took me in and he saved me. And that's what he wants to do for you. I don't know what you're going through right now. I don't know. Uh, I don't even know what life is going to throw at you tomorrow. But I know the hits are going to keep on coming. All right? All right. Your opponent is going to keep throwing punches until he either knocks you down or knocks you out. Right, that, right That's right, Brother Miles. And uh, Satan is an all-purpose destroyer. But when you get with Jesus, you have resolve. You can now be changed. You can now be saved. He can now, you can now go through the birth canal all over again spiritually and come out clean. All your sins wiped away. And now the Lord starts building you up. Huh? He starts building you up. That's how training works, you all. We want to lose the, the fat of sin and gain the muscle of God, the spiritual muscle of God. He's going to build you up strong in Him. He's going to purify you in Him. Amen. You're going to lean out spiritually. He's going to take the sin out. He's going to put God's holiness in. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. That's what He wants to do for you. And with, along with holiness, you will get uh, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Okay? Your feelings won't get hurt so easily when you have Jesus in you. Okay? You won't have to be in the doldrums and depressed all the time. Okay? Jesus will build you up because you say, I got a God that'll never leave me. I've got a God that'll never turn or turn me away. I've got a God that I can ask questions to any time of the day. I believe with all my mind, persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor power, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, or anything else that can keep me from the love of Christ. That's what he will give you. Thank you. Guaranteed. It's in the word. So, you get there by asking him into your heart. By believing him to be God. In faith. And I'd like to pray a prayer for you right now. And if you pray with me. God will accept you as his child. Just pray this prayer from your heart and say, Lord, I am a sinner, but I repent my sins to you right now. I believe you to be God. You died for us and God raised you from the dead. Lord, would you come into my life now and be my savior? And I will follow you for the rest of my life. With your help in Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer and you are sincere in your prayer, you have no doubt about it, you are now a child of God. Nobody can take that away from you. He's not going to throw you out, kick you out, tell you to get out. He's going to keep you. He's going to walk with you. He's going to teach you. The Holy Spirit is going to come into you. Your habits are going to change. Your lifestyle has to change. All right? It's not going to always be easy. It's not going to always feel good. Some days are better than others. But remember, you're growing in Christ. Amen. You're a new creature. So uh, along with growth, we get growth pains sometimes, you know. I got some grandchildren. They're tall. And they said, but, uh, you know, that, that my knees hurt. My ankle hurts. I said, well, wait till you get older. That's, those are growing pains, okay. <laughs> and so you're going you're gonna to have a little bit of pain, but God's going to work it all out. And you're going to be much better for it. And trust me on this. One day we'll all be in heaven 
and it'll be so nice and so sweet and you'll, uh, uh, you'll never hurt again and you'll never have to worry about things like that. Like the Bible says, God's going to take care of you. He'll wipe away every tear, but it starts right here with Jesus. Amen. So let the Holy Spirit work with you and continue to guide you and we'll, you'll all be just fine. Amen. Amen. So now uh, I'm just going to pray out for today and uh, pray that the Lord continues to guide us and take care of us. And I'll let you all have your day. Um, we want to say hello to Teresa Pearson. Thank you, Teresa, for, for, for joining us. Uh, yeah, I, I'm looking at the name. Praise God. And we hope you uh, something was said that will help you in your walk, help you in your day-to-day -day excursions, that God is here for us all. Amen? So let's pray. We have another visitor, Ron. Pastor, Pastor and Lisa, stop. Okay. Father, we thank you so much for this time. <clears throat> I thank you for everyone that joined us. I thank you, Lord, for those who will join us, Lord, and we'll see this uh, broadcast later. Lord God, you, this is the word that you put out. <clears throat> so I'm asking you to bless everyone, Lord, who came today. And as we leave here, Lord, would you continue to bless us with good health? And uh, if we're going through struggles, Lord, <clears throat> Bring us through, and at the meantime, in the meantime, let us be lights for others, Lord. However you use us, we want to be your vessels, your vehicles, Lord, to go up and down the road, spreading the word as you have given it to us, Lord God. So we thank you, Lord, for everything you do for us, and we thank you for being the God of all creation, who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above anything we could have asked or imagined according to the power that is working through us. So you be glory in the church through Jesus Christ our Lord. And if we all agree with this, will you all say with me, Amen. Amen. God bless you, saints. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. Praise God.